So there's evidence that over the past uh, 10 years or so, we've suffered more flooding than we have in the previous few decades. Um, and that's partly um, a result of having moved from a relatively flood poor period um, between 1950 uh, and the uh, middle of the 1990s to a relatively rich flood period since then. We think that under climate change conditions it's going to increase more um, and so uh, the projections are highly uncertain but wetter winters, uh, particularly in the uplands of the west, um, and also uh, an indication that there'll be more intense convective summer storms in uh, the UK as well. So there are three components to natural flood management. The first is looking at ways in which runoff is generated when it rains heavily on uh, saturated soils and measures that you can put in place to try to uh, modify that process. They might include tree planting, um, better management of soils and better agricultural practices. Um, the second kind of natural flood management looks at the way flow is connected as it moves downstream through the landscape um, and the sorts of measures you might put in place to, to manage that might be um, debris dams in uh, water streams or blocking agricultural drainage ditches and so on. And then finally there's management of the river systems and the floodplains themselves, reconnecting rivers to their floodplains, rewilding rivers and um, making more room for the river uh, to, to flood uh, in, in ways that it might, might have done naturally. We found that by and large, the, the, the benefits that you have for, of natural flood management are concentrated in local areas for relatively modest floods. Um, as you move to larger and larger catchments, the benefits of natural flood management become less and less. Um, and as we're dealing with more and more intense storms, if you're looking at the impa impact of very intense rainfall uh, connected with a storm like Storm Desmond, for example, then the degree to which you can manage that using natural flood management uh, goes down as well. We think this strengthens the evidence base that policymakers have to decide what to invest in um, in relation to natural flood management. What works and what's value for money determines what you should uh, invest in in order to make an impact. And one of the interesting conclusions that we've come to um, is that you can manage local flood risk using natural flood management, but that other sorts of measures might be necessary um, in order to manage the most extreme floods like Storm Desmond. One of the most important things is to extend monitoring and evaluation in time after natural flood management has been implemented so that we can see whether it really makes a difference in the most extreme storms. And the other really important scientific need is to understand the impacts of natural flood management on larger and larger spatial catchments in bigger and bigger rivers um, to, to make sure we understand how those benefits add up as you go downstream.